the sidelines of the African Union Summit, Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta reflects on the themes of the summit, critical issues in the East African region, and outlines his plans for Kenya. I, Uhuru Kenyatta. Kenya turned a new leaf on the 4th of March, 2013. The country carried out its first general election under a new constitution peacefully. By doing so, Kenya proved critics that it predicted another election meltdown, similar to the one that rocked the country in 2007 and 2008, wrong. In a vote that saw one of the highest turnouts in the country's electoral history, Mr. Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta was declared winner of the presidential race by Kenya's Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. The outcome, however, was contested by Raila Odinga of the Cord Coalition. The former prime minister and his supporters alleged that the presidential vote was replete with irregularities, shifting the spotlight to Kenya's new Supreme Court under Justice Willy Mutunga. Despite my agents regularly, regularly updating and complaining to the IEBC about the incidences of electoral frauds, malpractices and irregularities they discovered during the elections, the IEBC neglected, refused or failed to act. Mutunga's court returned a verdict that reaffirmed the declaration by Kenya's electoral body of Uhuru Kenyatta as the winner of the presidential elections. Again, Kenya remained peaceful in the face of this historic ruling. But statements made by a section of the United States and European Union officials ahead of the March 4th election had cast a long shadow on the campaign and raised temperatures in diplomatic circles. We're all here as envoys. Our mandate is to favor conducive, good, fruitful relations for a prosperous Kenya. And that must be absolutely clear. The last thing we want is to interfere in the internal affairs. The hardline position taken by some U.S. and European Union diplomats ahead of the Kenyan polls, in the view of some analysts, turned the vote into a referendum on the International Criminal Court, where Mr. Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto, and radio journalist Joshua Sang are facing charges of crimes against humanity. Those statements were seen as an attack on Kenya's sovereignty, and they set the tone for the speeches made by regional leaders at Mr. Kenyatta's inauguration in Nairobi on the 9th of April. But this is my personal opinion now. Furthermore, I want to salute the Kenyan voters on one other issue. The rejection of the blackmail by the International Criminal Court and those who seek to abuse this institution for their own agenda. Late last month, the ICC topped the agenda of African leaders at the 21st Summit of the African Union in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The leaders used the occasion to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the founding of the OAU, now the AU, to send a strong message to the court. Regionally, Mr. Kenyatta has promised to steer ongoing economic integration efforts within the East African community. He takes over at a time new oil and gas finds promise heightened economic development prospects for the region as a whole. Domestically, Mr. Kenyatta seeks to steer Kenya to become a middle-income economy with the Vision 2030 blueprint. Your Excellency, thank you very much uh, for your time. I want to begin by looking at the OAU African Union's uh, 50 year celebrations. Now, your father, Kenya's founding father, Jomo Kenyatta, was one of the architects of the Organization of African Unity. Looking back 50 years, have the ideals of the founding fathers of African countries been achieved? I think I'd say they've partially been met. Um, but I believe we still have a very long way um, to go, especially. Um, if we look at the point of view from the essence of the original charter was the, you know, the independence, the liberation struggle, yes, we have succeeded there. But in terms of some of the other issues, you know, tackling poverty, tackling unemployment, equality, um, infrastructure development, prosperity for our people, I believe we still have very major challenges uh, to overcome 50 years down the road. At the, at the time of independence of African countries, though, the, the, the driving force was liberation from colonialism, socio-economic development. What defines Africa today? I think what defines Africa today is the fact that uh, we have a resurgence in the feeling of our own um, unity and the feeling that we need together to challenge uh, our common problems or to tackle our common um, uh, problems. Um, 
there is a deeper feeling that uh, we need uh, African solutions going forward. There's a deeper feeling of the need for uh, integration, greater um, intra-Africa trade, greater movement amongst people within the African continent. I think there is a resurgence of that identity uh, as Africa that was uh, prevalent 50 years ago, but somehow we, 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 we lost contact with that. And the need for us to begin to develop our resources and to make them work for Africans as opposed to us being just a center um, of extraction and exploitation. There, there is a, a feeling of a resurgence or a rebirth of Africa at the moment, though uh, Pan-Africanism is, is a very strong uh, component of the uh, OAU AU celebra 50 year celebrations. Though, What is the significance of Pan-Africanism at this time when the world is more integrated? What is the significance, for instance, uh, for Pan-Africanism for a country like Kenya? I think the significance is uh, the fact that we are beginning to understand that uh, we, we have focused probably for far too long on, on, on feeling that solutions will come from the West. We have been feeling that uh, our partnerships should be more with Western or developed nations as opposed to the fact of understanding that deeper integration, deeper, uh, uh, um, a deeper working understanding within the African continent is probably where our solutions lie both from a t point of view of trade, as you know, today Kenya's biggest trading partner is Uganda, right? um, that one would not ordinarily recognize. Deepening that trade uh, means that we have the capacity to expand our own manufacturing capacities. We have the capacity to um, be able to build on, on, on each other's uh, 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 strengths and tap this vibrant, growing, young population that, uh, that, that, that is out there. You're talking though about uh, Uganda being Kenya's uh, largest trading partner at the moment, but President Museveni himself uh, did say previously that intra-regional trade within the EAC bloc is only still at some 13%. Uh, where is the challenge there? That actually to me is not a challenge. That and in there lies the opportunity, as I have said, for Kenya. Huh? Our greatest trading partner um, or our largest trading partner is Uganda. But there is still a huge uh, potential um, that still remains to be to be to be to be tapped. Right? Um, uh, if if you look, for example, now I mean with deeper integration, removal of our, you know, trying to create the the, the common market, um, we haven't even yet begun to tap the the possibilities that that are out there. Yeah, only 17 percent of our trade is amongst ourselves, right? Now talking about the East African region in, 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 in total. When you look at food security, why do we need to look at food security from a Kenyan perspective? Let us look at food security from an East African perspective. Uh, there are a lot of areas out there that have a great potential of ensuring that they are capable of growing food. Why do we need to be importing rice, for example, from, 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 from India or Pakistan? We have that potential within the region. That is, again, potential for not just food security, but also greater trade, again, amongst one ourselves. We have hardly scratched, scratched the surface. Um, and if we really were to focus on it, I believe that's where the potential of our prosperity and uh, growth really lies. East, East African countries, though, have uh, recently become oil and gas producing uh, countries. And uh, there is now a lot of international attention on the African continent in general. And some are likening it, though, to another scramble for Africa. I, is that uh, how you view it as well? Well, indeed, there is that, uh, there, 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 there is that feeling because of the, 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 the newfound resources, especially with uh, regards to um, uh, our gas, new gas finds, new oil finds that are being found uh, within our own East African region. And uh, I mean, if I recall a recent meeting that we had in Arusha of the East African community, one of the agendas that was put on the table was that we need to recognize that there is now growing interest from other parts of the world uh, to get a hold of these resources. And there is need for us to be able to exchange as East Africa our own experiences so that we ensure that we're not played against each other and that we ensure that uh, we tap into our respective knowledge bank to develop a base that allows us to be able to exploit these resources for the benefit of the people of this region. 
So, so we, we, we don't want to end up as has happened in the past that we, we all then just focus ourselves on saying, well, there's oil, let's just tap it out to foreign companies and foreign nations. And then yet at the end of the day, the resource is exploited, but we just remain with holes in the ground and we just remain uh, as poor as has been. We want to start developing policies and common policies to ensure that these newfound resources actually benefit uh, our people today, but also uh, represent the potential for uh, future generations you know, as well to be able uh, to grow and, and develop. Africa is now, um, as you mentioned now, the new uh, economic frontier. And if you look at uh, the statistics of last year, uh, six of uh, the ten, the ten uh, fastest growing economies were uh, from yeah, Africa. How is, how is a country like Kenya leveraging on that economic turnaround? We want to ensure that we create an enabling environment that is able to attract investment. Right? To be able to say, and this is actually how um, we are marketing ourselves out there, that we, we, we now are focusing ourselves on infrastructural development. We have the fiber cable laid out to ensure that we are able to, to, to get financial services, for example, to set up and establish here, not just looking at, at, at the Kenyan economy, but looking at, at the greater regional economy. We're really focusing on developing the link between Kenya and the road link between Kenya and uh, Ethiopia, which I think will be concluded quite soon. We're also looking at starting and establishing a link between Kenya again and South Sudan, so that uh, we're not necessarily looking at attracting investment only from a Kenyan perspective, but more from a regional uh, um, um, perspective. And I think this uh, lies our greatest potential. We are now working, for example, with Ethiopia. Um, they have the ghetto projects uh, for hydro, where we hope to be able to tap into their, their hydro potential to help us meet our own uh, energy needs. So these are some of the things that we're actually uh, looking at that uh, I believe have the capacity to, to not only create opportunities, but also for us to be able to expand and, 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 and uh, grow our own economies by, by, by double digit. The other area, again, of focus is, is trying to look at our educational curriculum to make it more appropriate, expanding um, our technology uh, institutes so that we can have our people armed with the skills necessary to be able to take advantage of growing economies and to be able, you know, like you keep saying, you know, we need now more plumbers, electricians, and we need to be able to create the, 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 the learning institutions that provide our young men and women with those skills because those are the skills required to be able to tap now into um, the direction that we want to move in as Kenya. All right. When you, when you look at Kenya's economy, though, last year at 4.7% economic growth, uh, you're talking about a double-digit economic growth in a few years. What will be the key drivers of your economy? Well, I think the key drivers, first and foremost, is our ability to um, tap the uh, um, great potential that we have in agriculture. We are still largely a primary producing nation, I believe. Value addition is one area, uh, especially with our agricultural commodities, is one area that we are looking at to be a, a key driver, expanding our own agricultural base through um, less dependence on rain-fed irrigation to um, uh, irrigation as, 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 as the basis of agriculture, thereby expanding the areas that have that potential. Harnessing our livestock industry, again, is another area. Ensuring that we have disease-free zones so that actually our livestock will becomes less cultural as it has been, but we start moving more towards commercial uh, uh, um, life, livestock farming. The other great area of potential, of course, is uh, technology-based uh, um, 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 learning. With the fiber that we have laid out throughout the country, we're hoping to have incubation centers across the, 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 the country to try and tap again into our youth's ability to, to um, use technology to benefit themselves. The arts, again, is another area that we are, we are really trying and wanting to, to, to focus on. And energy and, again, our newfound uh, mineral wealth, this is another area that we also hope to tap in to, to be able to, to, to expand and grow, to be able to achieve the double digits that uh, uh, we are looking towards. Ultimately, what we are saying as Kenya is that we want to be able not just to look at the resources that we have, but to recognize that our greatest resource actually is our manpower. Right? And by being able to tool and to equip uh, 
especially our young people, that in, and therein lies our greatest potential to achieve our economic uh, um, growth and our economic agenda. Kenya has been pursuing uh, a look east policy, uh, you know, uh, trading with China, working with China and, and the countries of the east since, let's say, 2003 and, and thereabouts. I, is that going to still be a tenet of your foreign policy? Uh, I, I think, and I, as I stated even in my inaugural speech, we will continue to trade with uh, our traditional trading partners, but Kenya will indeed continue to focus on expanding uh, um, our, our, our trading partners going forward and definitely. Um, um, the East is, is, is a new growing market and th this is an area that we will continue to focus on and to see how we can um, strengthen uh, our, our, our trading ties, our, our, our political links. We also believe that we have the capacity to get technology that is much more appropriate to our needs um, by looking at some of our new, new, new partners. We want to expand our horizon. Uh, we, we, we don't want to be limited just to our traditional partners, not that we will delink ourselves, but we really believe that there is great potential to grow our capacity by looking at alternative markets, China definitely being key amongst them. What do you see, though, as your relations with China in particular and the BRICS grouping? I believe our relations are very good. Um, year on year, the trade between our two nations uh, uh, is growing. Um, the uh, bilateral exchanges we have uh, uh, in education, in, in sports, in culture, again, are growing year on year. We have uh, got major uh, projects, um, uh, infrastructural projects on the energy side, road infrastructure, that we are working together with, uh, with China, and we again hope to expand uh, in, in, that, in that particular direction. Um, so I, I, I believe that uh, as, as of now our, our, our relations are very strong and my hope is that we can only strengthen them uh, even further going forward. During the run-up though to, the, to Kenya's election, Kenya's traditional partners had taken a position regarding um, your election. O on what platform will your government be engaging with the international community moving forward? My government intends to engage with all partners on the basis of mutual respect and reciprocity, understanding that each nation is sovereign, understanding that we live in a community of nations that need to respect one another, regardless of the size of those nations, um, and the understanding that um, uh, the way to develop uh, international relations must be on the basis of mutual respect and reciprocity. reciprocity. We, we need to be able to understand that uh, the age or the era of dictating to small nations or trying to force down specific agendas are gone. We must be able to work together uh, for the mutual benefit of our respective nations. And that will indeed form the basis of our own foreign relations going forward. <laughs>
institutions. We need to be able to work together with our Somali brothers to help them strengthen their, their, their institutions, their uh, administrative institutions, to help start creating uh, institutions that can, can, can manage, that can help them manage their, 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 their own country forward, to be able to break the kind of clan systems that have existed and to create more of a Somali nation, a Somali uh, a feeling uh, in and amongst themselves. So I, I, I think that will continue uh, to remain the, the biggest challenge. And that is where Kenya also believes that not just in terms of providing and, and, and helping and um, uh, bring about security and stability, but I think the greatest role we can, we can really contribute towards ensuring a stable and prosperous Somalia is by helping them create the necessary institutions that they need to create civilian governance, right? So that they are now able to focus themselves on the provision of social services such as water, uh, road infrastructure, education, uh, um, proper financial services. Um, and that really, I believe, will and is going to continue to be the biggest challenge facing Somalia. Kenya's defense forces, though, are still inside uh, Somalia. What role does Kenya see itself playing in Somalia now and moving forward? The Kenya Defense Forces are in Somalia, first and foremost, uh, um, to ensure that we protect our own national interests um, that has been threatened by the, the, the growing incidences of piracy and terrorism caused by, um, brought about by Al-Shabaab. And we will continue to make that a priority uh, with our engagement currently uh, in Somalia. But at the same time, we do hope that um, with the presence of, of not just the KDF uh, forces, but the Amisom forces as a whole, we will be able to create a peaceful and stable environment so that um, the many refugees who have uh, um, fled as a result of the insecurity that has prevailed in some of those regions are able to, to, to return and once again join with their fellow citizens in building and developing um, their, 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 their own country. The question of uh, refugees, though, Kenya is host to millions of Somali refugees. How is your government going to address that? How are you going to address uh, the question of repatriating the Somali refugees back to Somalia? As you know, for a long time we have hosted um, many hundreds of thousands of, of Somali refugees. And, and, and it is in Kenya's interest to ensure that uh, um, this situation is resolved in the, in, in the shortest possible time. Uh, you know, as the Dab, for example, as there was one refugee camp alone in Kenya, which is equivalent to our third largest city. And the pressure that that is causing on the local environment, the pressure that it's causing on our own resources as a nation is, 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 is tremendous. So for us, the sooner that we can create an enabling environment within Somalia into which these refugees can return, the better for Kenya, and I also believe the better for Somalia. So th this really will continue to remain a central issue to, to, to Kenya, given the burden that we are currently carrying uh, um, um, with the great number of refugees that are currently based uh, in, in, in um, in Kenya. There are other trouble spots on the continent, the Democratic Republic, uh, Mali, the Central African uh, Republic. There are a few uh, as compared to 50 years ago, of course, but there are still some trouble spots. Where is the challenge and how is uh, Africa going to manage uh, these conflict prone areas? Um, once again, I think uh, even if you look at the Great Lakes region and the, 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 the various conflicts that are ongoing there, I think you can see that the, 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 the African uh, continent and indeed the, the, the regional uh, 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 neighbors are beginning to take an increasing, an increasing role in trying to uh, bring about uh, um, stability uh, in those particular regions. But there again, ultimately, like I keep saying, we must ensure that all the c initiatives that are being driven are actually driven with the idea that peace and security, not resources, must be the, the, the primary objective. 
to ensure that you bring about an inclusive, uh, um, inclusive arrangements, right? That, that, that bring the people together, that ensure that they are able to take advantage of the resources that God has gifted them uh, together, rather than looking at the resources as being what drives the initiatives that we have in those countries. And that's why I keep saying the, 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 the great need for us to be able to work together as an international community to ensure that, uh, for example, just as the Somali constitution is saying, let's have a bottoms-up approach that, that brings an, in, an inclusive, brings the people you know, on board in, in, in bringing about the solutions as opposed to initiatives that may divide the people and create greater uh, instability and maybe some of those are driven by less than noble uh, interests, you know, uh, more resource driven as opposed to really being driven by the needs and the plight of the people in those particular regions. Uh, finally, uh, Your Excellency, now Kenya has played a central role in Somalia, uh, in the Sudans, um, and continues to play a role uh, within the Great Lakes region. Where do Kenya's ambitions lie regionally and, uh, and on the continent? I believe that the future of Kenya lies within this continent. I believe that uh, our ability to create a prosperous uh, nation of Kenya lies in our ability to work together with uh, um, first and foremost our region and ultimately the African continent and for us to be able to look for solutions within and amongst ourselves. So, so, so therefore, the focus on ensuring that um, we, we, we have peace, the focus on ensuring that we have stability, not just in Kenya, but also in the region, will continue to remain a key and a central focus uh, of my government. I, you know very well, Beatrice, you know, we had our own problems in Kenya uh, about five years ago. And, 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 and I believe that uh, um, what helped Kenya really get back on her feet and resolve her problems was not necessarily what the international community was doing, shouting and saying and clamoring, but the fact that the region and the African continent came in and helped us right, uh, work together as Kenyans to provide solutions. And here we are now, five years down the road, uh, as a result of that support, as a result of, 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 of of that collaboration with our partners. And we are here having held, first and foremost, having been able to transform our constitution to take and to begin to tackle the, the, the underlying problems that uh, were prevalent um, uh, prior to the 2007 election. We've been able to reform our institutions uh, and ultimately to hold an election, um, an election that has been contested in court, but ultimately that has been uh, accepted by all players. And, and I think our ability to have done that within five years has a lot to say about Kenyans, yes, but has also a lot to say about the input of our neighbors and the African continent. And that is why we also believe as Kenyans, we must also participate and work to ensure that we bring about the same right, um, in our region and in our continent to be able us to open up our boundaries and really focus ourselves on that which will truly transform Kenya, which is increasing trade, increasing the opportunities available to our young men and women, working together to see how we can exploit the natural resources that God has given us for the benefit you know, uh, of our people, uh, current generations, as well as looking at future generations. This really is where the, the, the hope of this great African giant lies, and, and, and we will continue to to, to keep that central in everything that uh, we do going forward. All right, Your Excellency, thank you very much. Appreciate it.